excellent song for the focus that I wanted to highlight this morning. The Apostle Paul is writing to the believers in Corinth. He has to remind them repeatedly about his preaching among them, the things that he had taught, uh, the things that had been revealed uh, to them by his apostolic ministry. He begins doing this right here in what we call the first chapter in addressing an issue among them about baptism. I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus Gaius, also the household of Stephanus. I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Now that's a significant thing when an apostle has to say that some aspect of the application of the truth can take away from the central and the kernel of the truth. It can actually take away from it. These, these folk who wanted to give their attention to the person who administered a commandment of the Lord in them would turn people's eyes away from what, what the Savior of the world, the Lamb of God, had done. Now, we know what took place at the cross, and, and they did as well, to some extent, anyway. He, he was preached to them. In fact, just a few sentences later, he would say to them, I was, uh, I, I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He wasn't going to take away from that reality of the cross of Christ. We know there's a lot of truth in that phrase the cross of Christ, or Jesus Christ and him crucified. Because we have the benefit of the rest of the writings of the apostles and prophets in the spirit, we know where Paul would later on say to them in another letter that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That cross, of course, was the altar where he was offered for the sin of the world. He offered his body. He laid down his life. That body that was prepared for him to do that very thing was received and accepted in that shameful place. Remember he despised the shame? Yeah. And endured the cross. All, all of these things are contained in that. Peter would later say to another audience that our sin was put in his body on the tree. See, these things and, and many more took place. It, so much took place that it, that it had to be opened up over a long period of time, so to speak. And it's still being opened up, you might say, every time we expound these things and when we come to this table. For you remember what Paul will later say in this very letter. At this table, we proclaim his death until he comes. So this cross... The preaching of this cross, not, not the cross itself, as, as some, some others, Sister Anita has, has uh, spoken often of her childhood and, and the contorted focus of Jesus still on the cross of some religious groups. Everywhere, everywhere, they want still on the cross. We know he's not there. And yet... John did see him, didn't he? There at the center of the throne, a lamb that had been slain. Yeah. 
dead but alive forevermore. Yeah. So you see the emphasis of Revelation. What's 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 been, how this has been expounded to us, what we've been exposed to, as this is opened up and displayed the reality of what took place at this cross, about which we sing. The old rugged cross. Now you can you can see it the wrong way. You sure can. You can overemphasize that cross and make that cross an idol. You can do that. You have to have the eyes of your heart enlightened in order not to do that. <laughs> Many things that are parts of the truth. Paul would not allow this aspect of the truth, this, this uh, what, they, what they've been taught about joining themselves in the death, burial, and resurrection of, the Christ, of Christ, he would not allow that to take away from the reality of what had been preached to them that they needed to remember and that he instructed them in more detail about when they came to this table. Now, brother, I'm not giving you that same kind of instruction. I'm simply stirring up your faithful minds to remembrance of these things, this cross that we proclaim when we come to the table, when we partake of his body and his blood by faith. This very thing we will now do.